ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to q4 fy24 results conference call of cx limited hosted by motila lospal financial service limited as a reminder all participant line will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr aniket matre from motilal oswal thank you and over to you sir thank you riya good evening everyone welcome to the post results conference call of cx limited on behalf of motilal oswal security i would like to thank the management of cx for giving us an opportunity to hold this call From the management team, we are with us, Mr. Arvind Banerjee, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of CS, Mr. Kumar Subaya, Chief Financial Officer, and the Investor Relations Team. I would now hand over the call to Arvind Sir to begin with his opening comments, and then we can take the quick Q and A session. Over to you, sir. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon, and welcome to CS Q4 uh, Earning Call. I'll be taking you through the business updates for the quarter. and then i shall hand over to kumar for his remarks on the financial performance then we'll be open for q and a to start with we are pretty upbeat with the demand situation in india vehicle penetration is still low and trucks still don't travel 1000 kilometers per day so there is a lot of headroom government has been focusing on infra development and national highway network has grown 60% in a decade the top players in the industry are well positioned with capacities in place and balance sheets that enable matching pace with this growth the tire industry is uh, covering a growing share of india's manufacturing gdp and is expected to be reaching 3.4% of manufacturing gdp by 2032 we at fiat have experienced a stellar year characterized by a very high profitability of 635 crore for financial year 24 Uh, along with double digit roc the success was further underscored by generous dividend distribution of 300% and we had had a stable margin for the quarter and also for the year and strong fcf generation our ratios have been strong with debt ebitda being lower than 1 and debt equity at about 0.4 the tire industry being one of the most competitive industries in india is seeing good level of evolution Uh, with better pricing independence across segments during quarter 4 we witnessed uh, price cuts in cbr segment by some of the players but as yet we largely maintained the pricing with only marginal cuts in this category while we actually enhanced prices a minor way in the passenger segment as well as farm tires quarter 4 uh, uh, it's uh, and the entire financial year has been a momentous year for us because we are celebrating 100 years of our existence in the tire industry um, we continue to strengthen the brand with targeted market expense fiat is uh, has once again uh, secured the rights to the ipl strategic time out for the next 5 years so this will be a cumulative of 14 years now where this brand property will stand Uh, for improving the salience of the CS brand, volume performance uh, we grew by 5.4 percent uh, in the quarter uh, over last year, and uh, our replacement and export market particularly have done well in quarter four. Exports grew by 22 percent on volume, and we witnessed uh, we witnessed robust growth uh, from Middle East and Brazil along with Europe. Off highway tires also witnessed good growth in Latin and the U.S. markets. Replacement growth grew by 5%, uh, led by growth in TBR, passenger and two-wheeler segment. With our focus on premium categories, we have been able to improve our saliency in premium segments in all categories. PCR market share in replacement again increased this quarter, and now we are close to 17% market share. in two wheeler we have crossed 35% market share and maintain leadership we have gained market share in tbr as well though we are still in single digits oem volume in quarter four declined marginally primarily due to decline in uh, uh, in cv and in two wheeler tires 
Also on full year basis, our volumes grew by 6.5%, led by export and decent growth in replacement and OEM segments. By way of demand, domestic situation, as I mentioned, is upbeat. Inflation is moderated. We expect above normal rainfall in, in the forthcoming monsoon season. We expect in most categories high single digit to touching double digit kind of volume growth in OEM and replacement markets. The, the landscape of tire manufacturing is also being reshaped by increasing focus on sustainability and the already well-known trends of case, which is connectivity, autonomous, electrical, and shared mobility. On the margin front, uh, uh, we, must, uh, we, we should share first that the commodity basket has been flattish in quarter four versus quarter three in line with our guidance. Natural rubber prices are uh, trending high, which had marginal impact in Q4. But if this trend continues, we could have an escalation of RM costs by 3 to 4 percent in quarter one. We have been able to maintain our pricing in OEM segment and export markets. Operational efficiencies helped us to not affect our margin profile significantly. Standalone EBITDA for the quarter stood at 13.4% and standalone net profit was 119 crores. Capacity utilization continues to be good in the range of almost 80%. I will cover uh, now the extended producer responsibility, which is EPR. In July 22, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change issued regulations on EPR for waste that are applicable to tire manufacturers and recyclers. This would mean that the goods sold in domestic market in T minus two years will be considered as base for calculating our obligation. As per this, the company has an obli obligation as on March 31st, 2024 for FY24 and also for FY23. We have provided for the same on a prudent basis while the matter has been represented to the government by the company and industry forum to apply EPR prospectively and with changes in modality. We estimate the overall liability to be 107.2 crores for both years FY23 and 24, and this has been provided in the books in the current year, out of which 34.5 crores pertains to FY23 obligations and has been disclosed as an exceptional item during the quarter and year ended March 31st, 24. There has been evolving clarity and the relevant ecosystem is gradually coming into place for EPR-related costs and action. Going forward, we shall be providing for 100% of the quantity of new manufactured tires based on this formula. This will work out to roughly 1.2 to 1.4% on domestic sales. We expect that we will be able to mitigate this impact on our margins in the medium to long term with the improved product mix, pricing, and internal efficiencies. On the future trends, uh, electrification, we continue our good work in the electric vehicle segment. In the passenger EV segment, we have entered Tata Punch EV, which is a high volume uh, vehicle. Uh, with this uh, entry, we have become a supplier to all EV OEMs that are locally manufacturing in India. We now have close to 20% share in the passenger EV uh, in India. And we also have a share of around 27% in the two-wheeler EV ecosystem in India. In the commercial EV segment, we have got uh, an entry into switch mobility's first vehicle, as well as Volvo Aisha's new EV SUV, which uh, has been unveiled recently. Internationalization has been a key driver. We have launched 55 plus off-highway skills in Q4. Export business is margin accretive for, uh, for, for us and therefore we will continue to invest in truck mix for agri-radial and PCR and TVR. Right now the ex exports constitutes about 19 plus percentage and we would like to take this up to 25% in the next couple of years. Mahindra launched their OJA tractors in US completely fitted with CF tires. We are progressing well on channel expansion in US market. The macro situation in Sri Lanka is improving gradually. Passenger tire demand has improved there. However, commercial de tire demand is still to come up. On the premiumization front, uh, we launched the steel radial sport rad and cross rad in the two-wheeler range. 
This uh, is meant for high-performance motorcycles. The current potential is about 3% of the overall market and is expected to grow fast. We are also associating with, uh, uh, with uh, premium properties such as the KTM Cup, such as, and we are sponsoring uh, several adventure biking events as well. Our share in premiumization continues to improve. And in PCR, cross-drive, sport-drive, secure-drive, and secure-drive SUV continue to gain saliency in the whole category. We will continue to invest in uh, marketing spends, which hover around 2% plus range year to year, and which is the highest in the industry. As mentioned earlier, our coverage for tires required for BMW, Audi, and Mercedes continues to be in the range of 85 to 90%. And despite rapid introduction of new models, we'll continue to launch products to keep the coverage at this range. We will continue to have highest R&D spend as compared to peers in the industry for new product development for Indian and global markets. Our exclusive outlets uh, have reached 550 numbers by the end of this year, and our distribution expansion continues into the hinterland of the country. On the digital front, CS received Smart Manufacturing Company title at CNBC TV18 Network Smart Manufacturing Summit 2024. We continue to uh, deploy the Industry 4.0 initiative from Halol to a Chennai plant uh, in, in line with the Lighthouse concept. We have had a good engagement in all social media platforms. We continue to focus on increasing our connect with end users digitally. Brand searches for premium vehicles and SUVs grew, grew by nine times, 60% increase in brand conversion volumes and 156% increase in average engagement per post per month compared to FY23. Furthermore, through website leads, we registered a 50% increase in premium sales. Our capex for FY24 ended at around 860 crores. The expansion projects are on plan. We reiterate our strategy of doing bite-sized capex every year. In line with this strategy, we expect around 1,000 cores of capex in FY25. We are focused on reducing our carbon footprint. Uh, ton CO2 emission per metric ton of production was lower in FY24 by 7%. 36% of our plant power re re requirement is through renewable sources. And in, at Bhanduk plant, which is in the middle of Mumbai city, we installed an auto carbon charging system, which is good for the environment. Natural rubber sourced by alternate transit route went up to 26%, and the rolling resistance of tires went down by 5%. Overall demand situation is good. We are update about the India story, as I mentioned. And there is a mild inflationary impact in raw material prices. There is an EPR impact, and we expect to mitigate the impact of this escalation through better management of our resources. With this, I would now like to hand over the call to Kumar. Thank you, Arnav. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining our quarter four FA24 earnings call. Uh, as this is a year end, uh, I will share some financial data points relating to the quarter four and also full year, uh, post which we can take Q and A sessions. Overall financial performance, our consolidated net revenue for the quarter stood at 2,991 crores, year-on-year -year growth of 4.1%, driven by increase in uh, volumes. Our consolidated EBITDA for our quarter four stood at 400.91 crores, uh, which is about 5% higher than uh, the same amount of the previous quarter. Uh, the EBITDA as a percentage is a little lower uh, in the current quarter versus the previous quarter, mainly on account of advertisement cost and regulatory cost. The regulatory cost aspect has been already touched upon by uh, Arnav. I'll also explain briefly in terms of the impact of it. Uh, coming to gross margin, our gross margin saw an improvement of approximately 100 basis points driven by better mix and the impact of higher inventory at the end of the quarter. Uh, as we come into the current quarter, the prices of key raw materials like natural rubber and crude derivatives have shown an upward trend. In case of natural rubber, we are seeing an upward trend since the beginning of the previous quarter, 
and the same is likely to impact our raw material costs in quarter one to the extent of about three to four percent. And the crude has seen some correction in the last two or three days, and we hope it sustains at the current level. And if it sustains, that the impact of on, on raw materials could be lower. Uh, considering these factors, we continue to keep a close watch on raw RM situation, and based on how it evolves, <coughs> will appropriate pricing decisions should be taken. Coming to debt, capex, and working capital, we spent about 260 crores of capex during the quarter. So far, uh, and on our overall full year basis, we spent about 866 crores, which is broadly in line with the, our indications given in, in the earlier interactions. I'm happy to share with you our overall operating working capital came down by about 102 crores uh, during the year and largely driven by improvement in, in uh, inventories and receivables. And we are also happy to share with you that we generated a healthy free cash flow of 857 crores during the year, which is the highest, and, and that helped in terms of funding all our capex during the year from our internal accruals. Our consolidated debt stood at 1,629 crores as of 31st March, a drop of about 470 crores versus the same period of last year. Our debt to EBITDA on a consolidated basis stands at a comfortable level of 0.97 and debt equity of 0.4. Our debt EBITDA of 0.97 is the lowest uh, in the recent years. Uh, coming to um, uh, operational expenses, our employee costs largely remained flat at the same level as quarter three. Our marketing spend uh, has increased during the quarter on account of new call campaigns, participation in IPL and WPL. This will continue in quarter one as well in, due to uh, IPL uh, in quarter one. Uh, for uh, the year, uh, as we had explained in the earlier uh, on EPR, uh, during the year, we made a provision of about 107 crores towards extended product uh, producers' responsibility. Out of the 107 crores, uh, 35 crores relates to the previous year, and therefore we have reported that as an exceptional, and balance amount uh, has been shown as other expenses uh, in, in our consolidated as well as standalone books. Uh, in the quarter four, we approximately provided about 40 crores after adjusting the provisions that we made in the earlier quarters, the impact of this additional provision that we made in quarter four is close to about 1.3% of the EBITDA for the quarter, uh, and uh, this may be appropriately considered while making comparisons with the previous quarters. The appreciation for the quarter um, increased due to higher capitalization and commissioning of our assets, and we expect it to remain uh, at this level for the coming quarter and in the first half of the year. Interest costs declined during the quarter compared to quarter three on account of lower debts, and effective interest rate has largely remained the same in line with quarter three, and we expect the interest rates to be in the range of about plus or minus 25 basis points into quarter two. Uh, on a consolidated basis, we have an uh, exceptional cost of 58.17 crores. Uh, as explained just now, it includes close to about 35 crores relating to EPR. We also had an a uh, voluntary retirement scheme launched in one of our factories, and uh, the cost of that is about 7.99 crores. And uh, during the year, we also uh, made some changes in the distribution model at, uh, in Bangladesh, and uh, leading to reconfiguration of our business model, uh, and therefore, uh, we took a call to uh, take a write-off of some of the assets in our Bangladesh joint venture entity, and the impact of the same is about 15.66 crores. Uh, our overall consolidated for the profits for the quarter stood at 92.87 crores, and on a full year basis, it stood at 614.48 crores. Uh, in the board meeting, uh, the board recommended a 300% dividend for the last year, which approximately translates to about 20% of our profits, and uh, this is subject to approval by shareholders in the upcoming annual general meeting. With this, we can now open the floor for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two.
participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your question to only one question per participant. Should have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. First question is from the line of Arjun Khanna from Kotak Mahindra Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thank you for taking my question. The first, qu the first question is on the extended producer responsibility part of it. So, if you could uh, help us understand uh, why was it just taken this quarter, given that it came uh, or was notified since uh, 2022 November. Uh, the second part to the question is: uh, Are we registered as a manufacturer and recycler, or what registrations have we taken? And uh, lastly, in terms of the recycling bit, uh, is there a way of uh, doing it ourselves and reducing this cost base of what you mentioned of 1.2 to 1.4 percent? Uh, thank you. Okay, see, this notification uh, came was issued in the year 2022, as you mentioned, uh, around that period. Um, for producers of tires to uh, uh, implement the recommendations of that particular notification. Mm -hmm. So some of the conditions included uh, having a portal registered dealer for recycling tires. So that infrastructure did not exist in 22-23. In fact, even the first half of or first nine months of the current year, 23-24 also, the infrastructure was not fully in place. Um, uh, it is because of accounting prudence and to ensure that we follow the principles of conservatism. Okay, we have made this provision. Uh, the company as well as the industry body has taken up with the government already to uh, explore options or requested the government to make it defective prospectively and also with some changes in modalities. So it's in the absence of clarity with respect to uh, establishing the impact of it and also uh, uh, inadequate infrastructure. Okay, it was decided uh, in the previous year, uh, not to provide for the same thing. And even in the current year also, only towards the end of the year, when the government started uh, insisting on fulfilling the obligations, it was felt that uh, it is better to reflect it in our financial books. In our books, we started providing it from the beginning of the year based on our own internal estimates. Uh, when we came to a, uh, some kind of a certainty with respect to the amount, and we decided to provide in quarter four, whatever, whatever was unprovided, and uh, also relating to the earlier year. And the next question, we are not recyclers. So therefore, our, um, how we would like to fulfill the obligation is to uh, buy certificates from recyclers who will buy those tires from the market and then uh, recycle them and convert them into an another useful product. And we will buy those certificates from them. And the cost that we have shown our, uh, in our financial statement is that cost of certificates that we would have to buy from these recyclers. And we have not registered ourselves as a registered recyclers. Uh, those, regist those who are in the business of recycling have registered themselves in the portal as a registered recyclers. Sure. Thank you. That's very helpful. So just as a supplementary question on this, in terms of ERP certificate costs, uh, have we seen an increasing trend? And are they available to the quantum that's required at this point in time? No, it is not available. It all depends on what is the extent of um, obligation. Okay, and uh, as we said, it is because of accounting prudence we have made all the provisions. It is not available. It started some, some quantity started uh, being available in the portal from quarter four of the last financial year. More in the later part of it, uh, if someone were to theoretically arrive at the total obligations for this this period of previous two years and what is required in the current year, a fraction of it is what is available uh, at this point in time. And in terms of pricing trend, I think it's too early to say anything. Uh, it's just starting, so um, and I think we need more time to understand whether the prices will remain at uh, current market level or will it increase or go down. So I think we need more time. So, so just to understand, the number that we have utilized for this quarter is essentially the current pricing in the market. Uh, is that the right understanding? No, we are not utilized. We didn't buy anything in the previous quarter. Right. No, no, I'm, I'm saying the quantum. Accounting provision. 
Yeah, so the quantum for the accounting provision is the current price of the ERP certificate may not be available in that volume, but we have used that price into the quantity of uh, uh, recycling that we are supposed to do, that 35, 70%, etc. No, uh, we have we have uh, considered the current prices. We have also uh, and made some understanding because uh, the quantum involved is large. So we made certain certain assumptions with respect to what is likely to be the pricing, and accordingly we have estimated the liability. Sure. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Siddharth Bera from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, again, uh, just uh, to clarify this point, uh, we have provided 40 crore in the current quarter and the remaining 30 crore has been provided in the first three quarters. Is it the right way to understand this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, second is uh, uh, when you say that uh, the, the quantum uh, uh, provision for the next year will be somewhere about 1.2 to 1.4% of domestic sales. Uh, I mean, this is uh, this can vary depending upon the pricing in the market, or do you think this is largely uh, decided and it won't change? Uh, basically, if you look at the full year. No, it's, it's an estimate. Okay, and uh, it it will change because, uh, because the cost of certificate is what we are taking it as a cost. If the certificate cost comes down or goes up, it will have some variation. It is more an indicative number for somebody to understand the implications of it. So, it, uh, needless to say, any variations, any movement in the prices uh, will have some impact on the current estimate. Got it, sir. And so, uh, the second question is from the volume. Hello, could you please return to the question queue for follow-up question? Sure. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Amar Kant Kaur from Access Capital. Before that, ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that management is able to add this question to all participants, please limit your question to only one question per participant. Mr. Gore, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, hi. Thanks. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, my question was uh, regarding the RM escalations that we have seen in the recent past. Um, uh, the the measurable prices are, are are up significantly when the crude may not be. So in your in your estimate, uh, how much uh, uh, price uh, increases will we have to undertake to mitigate those kind of uh, those kind of uh, impacts on RM? And how much have we taken? And uh, and and, and uh, any any uh, clarity you can give on the price hikes that you have taken yet? Yeah, so coming to the price hike, uh, we did mention that we took a very moderate, very little price hike in quarter four itself in farm and ECR, not in across the category. In the month of uh, April, by April end uh, this year, in this quarter, we have taken a price hike of around one half percent in replacement. And we are in the process of uh, um, uh, converting our orders to the new pricing in international business. That also will be around one half to two percent as it settles down. OEM is indexed, as you know, so OEM pricing is um, uh, uh, it will will know the index and calculate the pricing at the end of quarter one. So that is the pricing situation. So if the price hike is uh, the raw material hike is three to four percent. Uh, then you know you need about one and a half two percent at least to mitigate. So with a lag, I think we will be able to mitigate most of the price uh, hike requirement. All right, I, I had follow-up questions, but I'll call back in the queue. <laughs> Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ragunandan NL from Nuvama Research. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. My question was again on EPR. Uh, sir, can you please explain the computation? Because uh, uh, when I look at your last two, three years of uh, two years of calculation, it comes to 1.5 percent of domestic sale in FI23 for 35 percent two years ago, and 1.4 percent for FI24. And for 25, you've given a range of 1.2 to 1.4. One of your peer who also reported results today. For them, the math works out to something like 0.8 to 0.9 percent. 
so so as per that epr document it was showing that uh, the calculation is based on weight into conversion factor into quantity so so how do we try and arrive at this number how is the computation done okay see uh, with respect to you know uh, uh, this is applicable uh, when you produce and sell tires within within india okay so uh so from that point of view when you apply as a percentage okay uh, on our total turnover uh, the it may not be comparable with any other organization uh, unless and otherwise uh, the uh, exports and domestic turnover percentage more is, is in the same range or it's at similar levels one and number two you know uh, as we also just now clarified the estimate of cost could vary from one organization to another organization to my knowledge till 31st of march uh, nobody would have incurred any cost of significance okay so everything that is getting reported is on a uh, estimate basis so only when you actually incur the cost you will get to know the real cost and uh, and this liability people will discharge over a period of time so uh, from our point of view when uh, arnab had indicated in his speech in terms of this number he, he indicated as a percentage of domestic sales okay uh, if we were to uh, convert as expected liability what would that be is based on uh, that percentage so uh, you you should at this point in time take more as an indicator and uh, Uh, and the number percentage could ma uh, marginally differ from one organization to another organization while we don't have understanding how somebody else has done i think it is on domestic sales so on domestic sales since it's uh, not 100% percent it is certain percentage of our total sales that that that, that is the way it would uh, work out too. and it is uh, also please note it is on production not on sales okay if there is any difference between production and sales that will also have some implications what you have produced if you have not sold okay uh, you may provide based on production but it may not it may not exactly match with as a percentage of sales uh, thank you for that explanation sir just supplementing on epr would you need to use more recycled inputs as raw materials will this lead to increase in rn cost see we already use some small percentage of recycled material okay and uh, and the product needs to be recycled okay it doesn't have to be incorporated in the tire manufacture once again our endeavor is always you know as a responsible corporate our endeavor is to see how to use greener material how to use a recycled material so that it has puts less load on the ecosystem so from that point of view uh, if there is an opportunity for us to use more we will certainly use subject to our r&d and recipe permitting that okay but how our endeavor is to see how to uh create that ecosystem that will uh, develop in terms of capability to recycle these tires i think that is the direction in which industry as well as organization will work towards got it sir thank you so much i'll call back in the queue thank you next question is from the line of vasudev banerji from icici securities please go ahead uh no thanks sir no, just wanted to understand like with this year with strong margin and good uh, business working capital also supportive uh, good free cash flow generation debt reduction so what is the utilization segment wise and what is the planned capex for uh, fy25 including maintenance growth capex and the thing as such so planned utilization is uh, around 80% in most cases barring tbr where utilization is very high they have uh, almost fully utilized the capacity and we are expecting a fresh production from our chennai expansion project of tbr in quarter 2 scaling up in quarter 3 and quarter 4 so tbr is an exception otherwise it's growing to 80% in all cases capex is around 1000 crores with about 250 crores of uh, maintenance capex and about 750 crores of growth capex primarily in chennai tbr project then our uh, ambarnath uh, expansion of agriculture radial project and uh, also in chennai pcr project these are the three main uh, projects where the growth capex will be deployed ladies and gentlemen as there is no response from the participant we'll move move on to the next participant 
The next question is from the line of Rishi Vora from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, thank you, sir, for taking my question. Uh, this quarter, uh, our volumes uh, grew by five percent, and replacement segment also grew in that range. Uh, and you guide for you guided for a high single digit, low double digit growth in the coming quarters. So, you know what uh, what are the key drivers uh, for you know volume project to projected to improve from here on? Can you just highlight some of those things too, which you are seeing on on ground? Thank you. Yeah, so quarter one, we uh, quarter one is a, a positive season for all kinds of tires because of the summer heat when tires are replaced, wear rate is also high. So um, uh, we expect uh, strong volumes in truck bus radials in replacement market. That is, uh, we expect strong volumes in passenger radials, which is also aided by the election season. Uh, and the rural and small towns are showing signs of recovery. We have had. Uh, very strong uh, uh, growth in replacement in motorcycle and scooter in the past three, four months, which we expect to continue in summers, uh, with a gain in market share in passenger categories, both passenger categories. In the OEMs, uh, uh, the, uh, the commercial category is muted because of election and is expected to stay in that zone till about August, September, when we might see a recovery in truck tires, OEM. Two-wheeler is doing very well in the second half of last year and expected to do very well this year. They're still below the pre-COVID level, uh, so we expect good headroom there. And passenger may moderate a little bit in the high base of last year in the OEM, but still low single-digit growth is possible. April, they grew by about 1.5%. And... Um, uh, and uh, globally, of course, in international markets, uh, we expect a small. Uh, we expect uh, the launch in the U.S. in the month of uh, July or August, quarter two. That is, uh, strong growth expected in Middle East, uh, in um, in Europe as well as Latin America. So, so that's the overall scenario of demand outlook across the three segments. Uh, so, is there any ballpark number which you would like to share for full year in terms of overall volume guidance? It's just high single digit for full year across segments, like on a blended basis? Yeah, we would be uh, targeting about uh, a double digit kind of volume growth, high single digit to double digit kind of volume growth across segments. Yes. Yeah. So that's the uh, average across segments, if you can see. Honestly, thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Amin Pirani from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just, you know, uh, going back to the EPR, uh, and thanks for all the explanations till now. Um, just wanted to clarify, you know, so I think there was a uh, rule that, you know, for a year, the, uh, uh, the provision which has to be made is for the prior year or, you know, two years prior production, or is it like, what provision you're making in FY24, that 70 crores, is for FY24 production, and FY25 will be FY25 production. See, uh, the, the uh, obligation for 22-23 is 35% of T-2. Okay, and obligation for 23-24 is 70% of T-2. So okay. that is the obligation. Okay. And if, if any unit company uh, tire manufacturer has come into existence during this inter interim period, uh, then the obligation starts two years after that. Okay. So for FI25, you will be providing 100% of FI23. Is, is that the correct way to think about it? Yeah. So the basis to uh, for that is uh, T-2 production basis okay. to arrive at that obligation. Okay. Okay, understood. And just just one, uh, you know, follow up on this. Um, you mentioned that you know you will try to mitigate it through uh, mix price and efficiency. So, uh, given that this is going to impact all the tire companies, at least the domestic business of all the tire companies, almost equally, um, are you not expecting that there should be a pass through at least on the OEM side, which is already on a formula basis? And even on the replacement side, because this is something which is an extra cost for everyone, or or do you think that there could be, uh, you know, companies which would not pass it on, and hence there is some competitive activity on this basis also? 
So on the OEMs, we have uh, started engaging with the OEMs, and as you rightly said, it is an indexed uh, formula for most of the OEMs. Yeah. So uh, we are uh, uh, hopeful of the outcome, but it's basis uh, a discussion with the OEMs and resolution on a one-to-one -one basis. Mm -hmm. In the replace in the replacement market, yes, it's a competitive situation. There could be competitive activity, uh, but um, uh, it is just like for the for the channel. And the customers is just like any any raw material input cost increase. So they are not really concerned whether it's CPR or if yeah. some raw material cost increase. So uh, the price hike will be uh, just taken as if an input cost uh, has gone up and based on the competitive activity, of course. Understood. Understood. Thanks for this. I'll come back next. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mumkush Mandlesha from Anandrati. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. We're not uh, able to hear you, sir. Uh, can you hear me now? Is it better? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, sir, I just want to understand on the market uh, pricing environment in the market, sir. Uh, I mean, you have taken the price hike in the end of April. Uh, one particular one large player has diverging in terms of price increases. So how do you see that kind of uh, uh, impact on the pricing for us, sir? See, pricing, as I said, is uh, not totally 100% dependent on competition as it used to be some five, seven years back. There is some degree of pricing independence that is possible. There is some degree of market share movements also that are possible. But individual players decide on their relative strengths and take those calls. So uh, it has played out uh, uh, over the last seven, eight quarters, and it will play out in future as well. So, and the quantum of price hike one may decide to take in different categories may also be different, right? So we have taken the price hike basis our strength and uh, where we believe that uh, um, uh, we can uh, pass it on without any significant impact on our market share or on, on our volumes. For example, in passenger car category, we took a minor price hike in quarter four and we gained market share in quarter four. But it may not hold true for all categories for us and likewise for all the competitors. Understood, sir. Uh, just Kumar, sir, uh, uh, what would be the impact of HC on the freight cost for this quarter, sir? No, uh, see, freight rates have moved up for certain. Uh, so it has moved up for uh, largely two movements to uh, Europe, okay, and the rate increase has been happening since beginning of quarter four. So it's almost 300% increase is what has happened in freight rates. So it, it stays at that level now. Okay, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, my question pertains to the current quarter performance where if I adjust for the EPR provisioning, the beta margins have improved almost 130 basis point uh, vis the third quarter despite uh, stable RM basket and uh, likely impact of rate cost. So uh, uh, is this entirely uh, due to mixed improvement or there is something else uh, which is uh, not getting uh, captured? Okay, uh, no, see... Uh, I think you are referring to the gross margin has improved by about close to about 100 basis points. No, no, I'm referring to the margin. The beta margin has improved about 130 basis points if I adjust for uh, the EPR provisioning. So if you adjust for EPR provisioning, is that so? If you yeah, yeah. if you approximately let's assume about one 1.2 percent kind of an impact of quarter four. So if you add it to the uh, quarter four margin. It is not one percent improvement. It is a mark, about 20, 30 basis points improvement over the previous quarter. That's what it is. So that's largely attributable to uh, you know better mix. I think uh, as Arnav had earlier mentioned, we grew strongly in replacement and exports, so that played little, uh, some role. And uh, the way gross margin, if you are referring to gross margin, gross margin, the way it is computed. Uh, it's based on, uh, uh, it has some impact on account of if you hold a higher level of finished goods inventory, the way gross margin gets reported, 
it will tend to show a little higher because uh, you adjust the closing value of finished goods which will include non-material component and therefore it might appear as a higher improvement in gross margin but at EBITDA level it gets neutralized. So largely I think uh, if you add back it is not a 1%, it is about 0.3% improvement over the previous quarter, quarter on quarter. Okay, okay. Got it. And uh, second question, Pertin, given that uh, there is such a strong outlook for demand uh, which we are looking at for FY25, and we're already at 80% X of PBR. Uh, do we need to increase our capex uh, investments uh, to meet this growth and also meet our market share aspirations? Uh, or we can manage to do bite-size uh, capex uh, without looking at a large brownfield expansion. As I mentioned, the capex utilization is highest for TBR. In TBR already there's a big expansion under the Chennai. And we expect uh, commercial production in quarter two. So uh, so we are prepared for uh, meeting the TBR demand and growing market share in TBR. And for the signal? Can, can you repeat, please? For uh, other segments, PCR and uh, TBR and APR? For other segments, there is enough headroom to grow in the current capacity. And in PCR also, there is an expansion going on, uh, looking at uh, future demand of two to three years. So the current capex outlay of 1,000 crores is sufficient to look after current demand as well as uh, future demand in the medium term. Okay, got it. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Swetcha Jain from Whitestone Financial Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, so just coming back to the EPI provision. So what I want to understand is going forward, every quarter we will make a provision of 1.3 to 1.4% of the domestic sales. Uh, have I got this correct, sir? See, yeah, it is an indicator, I think, um, because it, it has just started in the quarter that went by, we had not incurred anything. So from our point of view, it's more an indicator. Okay, it could be in that range. It depends on the you know cost of certificates. It, uh, we we look forward to. We hope you know government considers the request request of uh, the industry. So you use more as an indicator. I think we can keep fine tuning in the coming quarters uh, once we get a better hold on uh, the uh, the certificates market and also. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, we are assuming, you know, uh, as the need for recycling increases, there could be more players coming into the markets. So these things, all these things will influence. But, okay. So, but we need to wait every quarter or we will do like just in case. not able to hear your question. So it will be on approval basis from here on. So as, uh, uh, I think the rationale for uh, making the provision in quarter four, we explained earlier. From here onwards, it's going to be part of our normal uh, cost. Uh, subject to, you know, if we, if we are able to get some uh, get some benefit from uh, through the interactions with the government, I think it will get adjusted appropriately. We look forward to it. But if if, okay. if it doesn't come, we will continue on a quarterly basis. Okay. okay. And so just to follow up, if I can ask, actually, I missed the volume numbers that you were giving during the commentary. Could you just repeat those if possible? Uh, the industry growth. Okay, so we were uh, we are uh, if you are talking of CX uh, growth uh, numbers volume, then we grew by about six point five percent. On a full year basis, 5.3% on a quarterly basis, and uh, uh, this was distributed uh, across uh, across the uh, segments uh, with a very high growth in two-wheeler and passengers, and uh, somewhat lower single-digit growth in uh, in, in uh, overall truck bus. Speciality also grew close to double digit. PBR grew in single digits, so that's the kind of growth rate uh, in uh, for Q4, why or why? Okay, so this is uh, replacement or only replacement growth, right? It is overall. Overall, okay. So would you be able to give uh, volume growth in replacement and OEM separately? 
OEM, um, OEM, as I mentioned, uh, we uh, we grew well in replacement, and OEM was moderate in quarter four overall. So most of this growth came from OEM, from replacement and in the market. Okay, okay. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Next question is from the line of Nihar Dave from Living Root Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity for uh, asking a question. Uh, but most of my other questions have been answered. Uh, I just wanted to ask, would it be possible to provide me uh, market share in uh, market share breakdown by product or by uh, segment category? Are you asking for replacement? Uh, so for all of the all of the segments. Sir. Uh, approximately, uh, as I mentioned in. Uh, Passenger, we are at about 17 odd percent in replacement. About two two wheeler would be about 35 percent plus, and uh, um, and truck bus radial will be still in single digit but approaching double digit. And this is replacement. In uh, OEM, it is similar. I mean, uh, the truck bus radial will be higher at about uh, mid double digit, and uh, passenger would be slightly lower than 70. And two wheeler will be around the same, slightly lower. Okay, correct, correct. Uh, that's that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kaushik Poddar from KB Capital Market Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hi, Arnab. This is Kaushik Poddar. I hope you can place me. Yeah, Kaushik. Yeah. Okay. I am speaking to you after a long, long time. Uh, see, uh, what is the stable mar margin you see? I mean, around 13, 14% is the long-term margin. You, you, uh, you can, uh, uh, we can take it as a long-term, uh, uh, whatever the target or something, or you can improve on it. See, we don't give a guidance uh, for future. We have been okay. mentioning that we would like to maintain uh, the uh, EBITDA margin at a uh, uh, in a tight, narrow band, because uh, we invest uh, when we can invest, as we are investing in the IPL in quarter four, and quarter one also will be investing heavily in the IPL uh, and brand. And uh, when there's a raw material hike which we cannot mitigate, we uh, we manage the investment on to the next quarter. So basically, we are trying to manage uh, in a tight band, maybe the margin. And when that happens, usually it goes up over a period of time. Provided there is no inflationary impact, so there are many uh, things at play. If there is a sharp inflation, very difficult to manage the margin at current level. So what our endeavor is to manage it in a tight band. Okay. And my next question, which is that, uh, see, you said that as far as the passenger, uh, sec uh, uh, passenger segment goes, PCR, you are able to at least uh, set the price. I mean, which are the segments you are in which you are the price setters, and in uh, and the segments you are the price takers? In other, which other segments you are the price takers? There is no clear uh, position that a reward like that uh, in truck bus radial, where we are a single uh, digit market share player, we are price follower. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, in the other two segments, it depends on the situation and our need to uh, gain market share. So sometimes we have been able to. Ask we have been able to take independent calls on pricing in these two segments. Okay. And see, as far as the market share goes, since you have such a high share in the two-wheeler segment, I mean, probably you are the highest. So don't you have a pricing power that much more there? We do have pricing power relatively better in two-wheeler segment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Rondo. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ashin Modi from Equator Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, my question was regarding uh, the EMP expenses. Could you quantify its impact during the quarter and what sort of impact uh, could we have uh, in the next quarter because of this IPL and WPL? It is 2 to 2.4% 2, 2 roughly. Uh, it, it varies. So it fluctuates around that. Uh, it, it will be more uh, above two in these two quarters and then maybe moderate in the subsequent quarter. Okay. Uh, then the uh, last question is regarding this cost that we have reduced our rate significantly. So that's 460 crore this year. 
So how do we uh, see the reduction in the next year or next couple of years? No, see, uh, uh, this year free cash flow generation has been very healthy, I think maybe highest. Um, going next year, I think uh, it was indicated that our capex plan for next year is about 1,000 crores. Okay, and um, uh, we would also like to uh, normalize working capital. Okay, so because at the end of the day, we have to meet the service levels uh, across the uh, geographies. So uh, we, we managed to fund all our capex from internal approvals last year and still managed to bring our debt down. Uh, in the first half of the current year, we see some uh, cash flow happening, you know. Uh, in case uh, of EPR, which we spoke about, there will be something. We have declared dividend just now. Okay, uh, that itself translates to about 120 crores of dividend. Uh, so we will keep in mind. I think um, we will keep a debt within a range. Okay, with, uh, within a range, uh, uh, we are around 1600 crores of debt on, on a standalone basis. Uh, we will keep within that range of over 200, 300 crores on the higher end uh, and uh, uh, and we'll continue to work in terms of opportunities to bring the debt down as and when it happens but uh, just to want to share with you that we are comfortable at current levels of leverage okay so i know we all know uh, over leverage is bad but under leverage is not good also no, uh, so from that point of view we'll try to manage and the reason for keeping the capex it's more a preparation for the following year and year later on in terms of capacities. Is also because of the fact that a balance sheet is strengthened. So we'll operate within this range. Sure, thank you. Uh, I get back to the case. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Amin Pirani from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Yes, hi, thanks uh, for the opportunity again. I just had a, a clarification. So what is the TBR capacity right now and how much are we increasing it by in the expansion that we're doing in Chennai? So, uh, 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 our factory existing capacity about 130,000 tires per month. Uh, it, it can be stretched a little bit. Uh, and what we are putting up in Chennai is about 45,000 tires per month. Progressively. Okay. So approximately 30% expansion on the TBR capacity. Yeah. Okay. And this will be available uh, for production in FY26 or this will start to become available during FY25 itself? Uh, our intention is to commission the plan in quarter two of the year. Okay. okay. Normally it follows to the normal ramp up route. So quarter three onwards it will start contributing to sales. Okay. Understood. Thanks for this. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Raghunandan NL from Nuvama Research. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, sir, on the export outlook side, if you can give some more color in terms of uh, uh, how you see the sustenance of double-digit growth, which markets, which products are likely to do well, and how do you see that uh, uh, you know, target of 25% share getting achieved? Yeah, 25% is the CDMC uh, within CF, which is currently 19%. So as I have mentioned, the key focus is on agriculture radials, passenger radials, and truck bus radials. So strong focus on passenger radial and agriculture radials. Truck bus radial is coming up as maybe, we can say two and a half categories. And uh, geographies are Europe, US, and Latin America. So these are the three geographies that uh, we'll focus on. Out of which US, uh, we have agriculture radial, which is scaling up. Passenger radial and truck bus radial are yet to be launched. In all other geographies, we have created the market access by way of distribution network. Product development is done. Product development is also done and tested for US. So uh, this will be the focus market. And Middle East is also shaping up well. Though I didn't mention about it earlier, but it's uh, it may be the fourth uh, area, but the two, first three are the focus area. Got it, sir. And H2 of SI24 exports had uh, grown uh, in double digits, uh, I think 15% uh, plus. So, so how would you see, uh, you know, 
uh, the double digit growth getting sustained uh, do you see any so uh, the international business is always uh, fraught with higher risk because of various geopolitical events over which we don't have any control uh, uh, so uh, should uh, be if there are no major um, uh, aberrations then uh, we see headroom uh, for growth being a value brand which is our products are very well accepted and at the right price at which we make good money it is a bit accredited for us we uh, see lot of headroom for growth in all these three uh, geographies barring some unforeseen risk which we have not accounted for so but it's, those risks are always there got it sir uh, and kumar sir uh, can you quantify that you indicated 300% increase in freight cost on the europe route uh, you know like would it be a 30 40 basis point kind of a hit this quarter any quantification there uh, what was the impact this quarter and also you know uh, thoughts on uh, pass through of this higher freight cost with customers have customers uh, responded positively have you got acceptance for pass through okay see normally there are two ways in which you price your product one is fob and another is cal okay whenever we have fob contract buyer takes the impact of uh, freight uh, as and when it happens in case of caf contract is where uh, where we have given a price including freight and in the intervening period uh, so long as the price Uh, is applicable we may have to pick up that uh, freight okay so but when when you renegotiate the prices at the next uh, uh, cycle either you uh, adjust the freight rates and uh, in the pay of price or agree some kind of an arrangement where the actual freight is uh, appropriately adjusted in the pricing so largely it's passed through okay and uh, the impact of that has already been taken in the previous quarter we don't expect that to have any incremental impact Uh, on us in the coming quarters thank you ladies and gentlemen as there are no further questions i would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments over to you thank you very much for uh, attending the conference call for cet we have had a good year and we Hope to see you again in three months' time. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of C8 Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.